This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Alec Murda uh, having the uh, conference before Judge Newman uh, just uh, the other week. Trial date now set for November 27th on the financial crimes, uh, focusing specifically on Gloria Statterfield. It's part of a 101 state charges that are against uh, him for his financial crimes. What do you think we're going to see November 27th uh, if we see November 27th, uh, an actual court date taking place? Well, I think that is a big if, right? Uh, there, Whenever you have financial crimes, they're even much more complicated typically than a violent crime. And so I could see this being put off. And of course, we're talking such huge numbers, $8.8 million that's at play here, uh, multiple defendants and multiple victims. In regard to Ms. Satterfield, uh, you know, a lot of people initially wanted to sort of blame that crime on, on you know, the Murdochs mm-hmm. themselves, which never made any sense to me. I know it just looked bad that they came upon the, the accident, if you will, her mm-hmm. falling, but it was much more believable what now has been been played out and mm-hmm. and they just wanted to take advantage of the money that could be gleaned from this horrible accident. Yeah, I, that's obviously what what took place. Who knows if, if there's anything more to it? I know that we all kind of speculated on that for a while. I, I am starting to go down the, the road that would probably may have just been an accident. Accidents do happen to even horrible people. <laughs> and maybe this was what that was or, or if there is more to it. I don't know. That's necessarily an intended murder. What sort of concerns do you think exist right now within that that court system there in South Carolina? Specifically yesterday, we had the hearing, Judge Clifton Newman there, the whole cast of characters back, but we're back in the courtroom as well where the allegations of jury tampering had taken place with the clerk of court. Is there concern for if there is a November 27th trial and anything that uh, comes out in that trial including if they use evidence or if they use statements or if they use anything from what came out in the criminal trial, nullifying or having to do a retrial on the financial crimes simply with the chance that uh, the murder trial may end up being redone. Well, I think certainly this, the newest allegations regarding jury tampering, it has this just paint type cloud that now is going to hang over anything that happens there, whether that's justified or not. Of course, now we know so much more, right? We know some jurors have said, listen, that just didn't happen. You know, counsel for them coming out Mm -hmm. and saying it's just not true. The court reporter or the court clerk has said not true. I always say, uh, you know, there's two sides to every pancake. They look completely different. And, you know, but I agree with you, Tony, it just is you know, it makes everyone wonder. And I think even before this happened, Mm -hmm. whenever you have a small town like this, everyone knows everybody, Mm -hmm. there's related individuals. You know, I had somebody ask me, geez, are there any other attorneys? (laughs) You know, because (laughs) these attorneys are just on repeat, um, um, you know, uh, defending somebody else that was part of the original trial. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's small and it's seemingly somewhat incestuous in terms of the characters in these trials. Yeah, it, it does make me wonder a little bit if, in fact, these claims are true and Rebecca Hill did make these comments. If that is, in fact, true, what I'm wondering is did to the rest of us, it seems very obvious you can't do this sort of thing. But I am wondering, with the atmosphere that is there, the culture that is there in South Carolina of kind of good old boy, we're going to kind of do things our own way here. It's different than everybody else. If she realized that she was tampering with a jury. I think that she's a very uh, savvy woman to be able to, at least the clerk of courts that I've dealt with are extremely smart. They're so organized. They understand the legal system. They, in some ways, end up really running the whole shebang, Mm -hmm. at least that I've been involved with. I mean, they're really amazing, uh, talented individuals. So, Tony, I don't think she's going to be able to, if she did say those things, 
sort of hide behind the ignorance umbrella. I don't think that's going to work for her. Now, as far as the jurors, could they Mm -hmm. have really thought this wasn't that big of a deal until they were questioned? That's a whole nother question. I still, I'm still bothered by just the whole of the allegations. Jurors are going to say baloney. Oh, it didn't happen. So I want to see every single juror on the stand with their hand raised and their other hand on a Bible saying what happened. That's what I want to see, Tony. I guess the question is, if one half is saying it happened and the other half is saying it didn't, who do we believe? Where does that go at that point? I think, I mean, obviously the bigger question of it all is, it's not just who do we believe, it's did it influence their decision in any way, shape, or form? Having a, a woman walking around, the clerk saying, oh, don't believe it, don't believe that. Obviously, you can't do that, but at the same point, <laughs> did it actually influence? Because I'm sure these jurors, as protected as they are from outside information, heard people say he's a liar and other people, well, maybe no one, <laughs> say he's a he's an honest, lovely man. But uh, the fact that they heard that, I, I don't know that it would have influenced it, but if it took place from that person in that position, in the places that it did, it almost certainly warrants uh, a retrial, I, I would think. I mean, as, as despicable as Alec Murdaugh is, he still does, as anyone does, deserve a, a fair trial without someone trying to sway it when it really didn't need to be swayed. I totally agree. I think that is stepping beyond that line. And really, the line is not gray. Mm -hmm. The line is black and white. Yeah. You cannot, in that position, influence, especially if if the words that were spoken were truly spoken. Mm -hmm. But I think, Tony, say we have, you know, half of the people say one thing, you know, it didn't happen. They're making it up. They misunderstood whatever they're going to say. And then the other, you know, individuals say it did happen. I think it's really going to come down to the assessment of those witnesses and their recounting of what happened. And then there's, you know, that's going to have to be assessed for the veracity of each of those. And then a judge is going to have to make a decision based on what they hear. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.